Hi, let's talk about the gluteal and hip region. So what, what we're looking at here is a hemisected pelvis with the proximal portion of the left lower limb uh, from a posterior view. And so this would be medial. This therefore would be lateral. You can probably uh, recognize the outline of the gluteus maximus muscle here. <clears throat> the gluteus maximus muscle uh, takes its proximal attachments from the posterior aspect of the iliac crest as well as the, the, the dorsal aspect of the sacrum here. And its distal attachments are to the gluteal tuberosity of the femur, as well as the iliotibial band, which you can see part of that right here. The gluteus maximus muscle is the number one most powerful extensor of the hip. And so it's going to provide quite a bit of uh, force um, for situations such as uh, climbing stairs or uh, raising oneself from a, a seated position. It's innervated by the inferior gluteal nerve and supplied by blood by the superior gluteal artery. While we have this rather uh, superficial view of the, the gluteal region, we can just make out just barely a little sliver of the gluteus medius muscle. Gluteus medius is a deeper muscle to gluteus maximus. Um, I think we can see it better here on the next slide. So uh, gluteus maximus here is being reflected away and we have a, a pretty good view of gluteus medius here. Uh, medius takes its proximal insertions from the lateral aspects of the ilium here, which you can see here in the inferior aspect of uh, just below the iliac crest. And it's going to take its distal attachment on the greater trochanter of the femur, which we'll see uh, in a, a deeper view uh, in a brief amount of time. Medius is going to have the same actions as uh, gluteus minimus, which we'll see in a second. And that is uh, <clears throat> abduction of the hip. So abduction of the hip, that would be move it, holding it, oops, holding it in place just ever so briefly, uh, or I should say securely, when the contralateral or the opposite lower limb is unsupported or in a raised position. So what this does is it maintains stability on the side of the pelvis that's opposite from the limb that's being raised so that an individual doesn't bend at the, at the hip. Medius and minimus are both innervated by the superior gluteal nerve. And if there's an issue with that nerve or a lesion, some sort of injury that can uh, lead to the Trendelenburg sign or Trendelenburg gait, and that's when the, uh, the hip tends to, to buckle uh, whenever there's only uh, support from that same sided uh, limb. So there, there isn't a, a maintenance of of posture at the, the side of the supported hip when the opposite limb is raised. So we don't have a, uh, a great view of minimus here. We can see a little bit of the piriformis muscle there. That's, that's the key to the pelvis. We can, we can see that a little better on this view. So before we jump to, uh, to gluteus minimus, I want to point out this is the piriformis muscle. This is what you want to look for 
uh, when you're looking at the, uh, the deep gluteal region here because this is going to be what makes sense of the neurovasculature for you. So um, arising superiorly from the space here um, above piriformis is the superior gluteal artery, vein, and nerve. Inferiorly here, well I should say right here, is the inferior gluteal artery, vein, and nerve. And just medial to it here, coming down, this large structure is the sciatic nerve. So in, in this case, the, the piriformis is immensely useful for making heads or tails of the, uh, of the vasculature, of the neurovasculature in this area. So we'll, we'll come back to the, uh, the muscle in just a second. But first, I'd really like to, uh, to show you uh, gluteus minimus. So minimus is a small muscle that is probably the deepest here. It's originating on the lateral aspect of the ilium, just inferior to the crest, um, even more inferior than the proximal attachment from medius. And it's going down and attaching to the greater trochanter of the femur. So minimus, like medius, um, is also responsible for abduction of the hip when there's contralateral lack of support from the other limb. So when the opposite limb is, is raised. And it, like medius, is also innervated by the superior gluteal nerve. In fact, this superior gluteal neurovasculature is going to be useful in differentiating minimus from medius. So if, uh, if you see something deep to this neurovasculature, it will be gluteus minimus. If it's superficial to this neurovasculature or posterior to it, um, it will be gluteus uh, medius. So back to our dear friend, piriformis, the key to the pelvis here, heading out to the greater trochanter. Uh, piriformis is arising uh, on the anterior sacrum in ilium. So this is actually within the, uh, the, the pelvis and moving out here through the, uh, the gluteal region. Uh, piriformis is one of very many uh, lateral hip rotators. Um, so as this muscle pulls, it's going to laterally rotate the, uh, the thigh at the hip joint. Um, also, whenever the hip joint is flexed, piriformis, like many of these other lateral rotators, uh, will abduct or abduct the hip. So when the hip is flexed, um, activation of the piriformis and other lateral hip rotators will abduct the hip. Piriformis is in the same plane as uh, gluteus minimus. Um, so they're just separated by this superior gluteal neurovasculature there. The, uh, the remainders of the lateral hip rotators here, uh, of which there are four for us to discuss. We have the superior gemellus muscle and the inferior gemellus muscle. Uh, gemellus means twin, so these are the twins muscles. Um, and these are arising on the ischial spine for the superior gemellus and the ischial tuberosity for the inferior gemellus. So here is the superior gemellus, I'll outline it. There's the inferior gemellus, I'll outline that. They're actually coming together on the midline, but you can't see it because of the tendon for obturator internus.
So superior gemellus from the ischial spine, inferior gemellus from the ischial tuberosity. Uh, these are combining with the tendon for the obturator internus. So these three muscles here are oftentimes referred to as a group called the triceps, right? Because there are three heads to it. Coxy, the three-headed muscle of the hip. And all three of these are going to be lateral rotators of the hip, and all three of these, when the hip is flexed, will also abduct, abduct the hip as well. Do some fancy erasing here. Well, for the want of a, a larger caliber eraser. The, uh, the final muscle for our consideration is quadratus femoris. Quadratus femoris, you can see here, um, it's taking its origin from the ischial tuberosity and going out to the proximal femur here. So not the greater trochanter, but still the, the proximal femur. And it is a lateral rotator of the hip. And then finally, we've, we've touched on this previously, but it, it bears some uh, re-mention here. Uh, between the piriformis, or superior to the piriformis, and running over the gluteus minimus, we have the superior gluteal neurovasculature, so artery, vein, and nerve inferior to the piriformis here. And these are cut because when you reflect gluteus maximus, these would break. And this is the inferior gluteal neurovasculature, so artery, vein, and nerve. These are all just lateral to, we can see here, the uh, sacrotuberous ligament and they're just adjacent to the sciatic nerve and the sciatic nerve here is running over the gemelles in obturator internus so it is running over triceps coxi as we can see here and it's also running over quadratus femoris as well so this has been my review of the gluteal and hip region, the muscles and the neurovasculature, and I thank you for your time.